At AZ Pet Vet, we love our pet patients. And our pet parents love that we have 20 locations and growing. So whether you're in the East Valley, the North Valley, even the West Valley, you can get your kids happy and healthy. Plus, we're open seven days a week, which makes everyone smile. AZ Pet Vet, a family of animal hospitals. 20 locations and growing. It was uh, discovered in December 2019 on Mount Ival, a site called El Bornat, on the second step of Mount Ival on the eastern side. Well, it's extremely important. Uh, I mean, so, some are describing this as the most important find of our lifetimes um, because it predates anything that we have before uh, regarding Hebrew script. So big questions like, was the Bible written when it purports to have been written? Uh, was there an alphabetic script even in existence by which early writers like Moses and, jo Moses and Joshua could have written? Um, many critics have, up to this point, argued against that and said, no, it was written much, much later in the Persian period or the Hellenistic period. Um, it, this tilts the, the scales in another direction. The debate has been going for a long time. I think this adds weight to the argument that it was written earlier. For example, with this 40-letter um, script, 23 words, the word curse is repeated many times, and then the, the name of God appears twice. Is it a summary of the curses of Deuteronomy 28 and 29, for example? Because there you have all these curses if you break the covenant that are going to come upon you. Uh, by having this structure, is that a literary summary of those? These are big questions that uh, I think we're all going to be thinking through in the days ahead. This is why I call this an earthquake, because it's going to have some aftershocks. So I thought this is too good to be true. I mean, the, the Bible describes Mount Ival in Joshua chapter 8 as the mountain of the curse. And Joshua is told to write on Mount Ival and to write curses. And, you know, they proclaim curses. So here we had what was a known curse tablet from a site that the Bible says that, you know, cursing, cursings were associated with it. So, yeah, I, I was just blown away by the, by what we had found. First and foremost, I'd like to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Rukak Wadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that rule well. And a sincere salutation to the Akim pushing his truth in sincerity, okay? And um, <clears throat> as you see here, it says, um, Cursed Tablet unleashes archaeological earthquake after raising the prospect Bible is true, okay? And, you know, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, okay, is, is, is uh, you know, visiting the, the world in which he created by, by, um, by basically, uh, you know, by um revealing signs okay it tells you in a second of the ninth chapter that the the end is manifest by signs okay and this is a this is a this find is very much a sign okay it says here stone tablet with curse written inside may solve ancient biblical mystery okay and and they claim to find a stone tablet okay with the word curse on it and also with the word um yahweh okay so you know i want to read this article and get a couple of scriptures lord willing um this will be edifying and it says here archaeologist dr scott stripling said he thought he the discovery was too good to be true after realizing it could solve a debate over when and who actually wrote the bible <clears throat> okay, it says the discovery of a cursed tablet was unleashed, an archaeological earthquake, and could be a clue in proving when and who truly wrote the Bible. The folded lead tablet, okay, and this is dated April 6th, okay, so it says the folded lead tablet, which contains a written curse on the inside, was discovered on Mount Ebal. In the Holy Land, a place associated with curses in the Bible. Okay, now this same place, okay, 
This is uh, Joshua's altar at Mount Ebal. If you see um, under this cap, under this picture, this caption, archaeological site. But this is uh, dated February 15, 2021. Okay, but this is uh, the same place, if you will. Look, all right. But um, but now they they you know the, this is the. Uh, the discovery of a stone tablet with the curse written inside. But in this article, okay, you know, it's actually talking about the discovery of the of Mount Ebal, the site, okay, where Joshua was told to write cursings on. Okay, let me read this little part in this article, and I'm going to go back to the other one. It says the site, and, and this article is named Salakia. I don't want to be all over the place. It says, Setters take on West Bank archaeology as ancient Joshua wall tumbles down. Okay. That's the name of this article. Okay. But basically, I want to read a little piece from this article that I was looking through as well. That is um, earlier than the, the, one we, the one that had the video, which I just um, showed. It says, um, the site is also revered by some Christians and Jews as the place where the biblical Joshua built an altar as commanded in Deuteronomy 27, which is described in Joshua 8 and 31 as an altar of unhewn stones upon which no man had lifted up any iron. Okay, so. So basically, uh, this site, they believe to be um, uh, that it's written about, okay, and uh, th this is the biblical um, Joshua Bill altar, okay, um, and, and he did it as commanded in Deuteronomy 27th, okay, but it's described in Joshua 8 and 31, okay, now, um, Basically, let, let's go back. All right. It says, It has been dated between 1200 to 1400 BC and features the Hebrew word for God. Okay, Yahweh in what could be its earliest ever appearance. All right. So they believe that this um, stone tablet with the curse written inside. Okay, which has the word curse and also has the word Yahweh could be... Um, the earliest ever in appearance, right? It says, if the dating is correct, it may prove the Israelites were literate when they entered the Holy Land, okay? And able to document biblical events as they happened, okay? And um, remember that uh, Joshua um, basically destroyed all the nations that were in um, the Holy Land, okay? And before that, it was the land of Canaan. But I want to, um, let's get uh, Deuteronomy 27, because uh, let, let's just speak about, or let's just read about how the, um, the, the, the altar was supposed to be made. Let's go here. This is Exodus 20 and 24. An altar of earth thou shalt make unto me, and shalt sacrifice thereon thy burnt offerings and thy peace offerings, thy sheep and thine oxen in all places where I record my name. I will come unto thee and I will bless thee. And if thou will make me an altar of stone, thou shalt not build of it hewn stone. Okay, so the 25th verse right here um, specifically says, If thou will make me an altar of stone, thou shalt not build it of hewn stone. For it, if thou lift up thy tool upon it, thou hast polluted it. Okay. So when, when, when an altar of stone was made, okay, um, you were supposed to not make it of hewn stone, meaning you weren't supposed to cut the stones. It was supposed to just be straight stone altar, you know, because you would pollute it if you uh, cut it, um, the stones, all right? So that's basically what, what you see here, okay? This is this is the place, okay? And archaeologists, um, they believe this is Mount Ebal, now, let's see. This is Deuteronomy 27, and, and uh, let's start at 1. And Moses with the elders of Israel commanded the people, saying, Keep all the commandments which I commanded you this day. Okay, so Moses 
uh, commanded the elders of Israel and the people to keep the commandments, man. Okay. So Moses did, okay, uh, basically speak to the Most High, and the Most High gave him commandments, man, which which Moses taught the people. Okay. It says, and it shall be on the day when ye shall pass over Jordan, all right, and Joshua passed over the river Jordan unto the land which the Lord thy power giveth thee, that thou shalt set thee up great stones and plaster them with plaster, with plaster, okay? So this was already um, before Joshua had um, went over uh, and passed over Jordan, but they were supposed to set up an altar with stones and and plaster it with plaster. Strong's H, 7874, seed, seed, and second entry, said, said, and third entry, sida. Let's see. Let's get this in the NLT. So this is a great find, all right? This just proves that the Heavenly Father uh, leaves artifacts, man, okay? And, and just a side note, you know, um, the Mormons claimed that there was a battle on Mount Cumorah in New York. Okay, but when you look into the the earth into Mount Cumorah, there's no there's no artifacts. There's no sign of civilization. So you see Al Bashim Al Shai, okay, you know, leaves a trace. Okay, so this could very much be the site where Joshua was told to put cursings, okay? You know, and, and there's also another mountain all right, to the to the to the opposite side called Mount uh, Gerizim, which which Lord willing I can go into, but it says here uh, Deuteronomy twenty seven and two in the NLT when you cross the Jordan River and enter the land, yeah, how your power is given you set up large stones and coat them with plaster. It says and thou shalt write upon them all the words of this law when thou art passed over. That thou mayest go in unto the land which Yahweh thy power giveth thee, a land that floweth with milk and honey, as Yahweh thy power of thy fathers hath promised thee. You see? So they were supposed to write upon them all the words of this law. Okay. To write, record, you see? Strong's H, 3789. Kathav. Kathav. To write, record, and roll. To write, inscribe, engrave. Write in, write on. To write down, describe in writing. To register, enroll, record. To decree, to be written. To be written down, be recorded, be enrolled. To continue writing. Okay? Describe, record, prescribe. See, so they were supposed to write, okay, the words of the law. Okay? When thou art passed over, that thou mayest go in unto the land which Yahweh thy power giveth thee, a land that floweth with milk and honey, as Yahweh um, thy power of thy fathers hath promised thee. Therefore it shall be when ye be gone over Jordan that ye shall set up these stones, which I command you this day in Mount Ebal, and thou shalt plaster them with plaster. See, and there shalt thou build an altar unto Yahweh thy power, an altar of stones. Thou shalt not lift up any iron tool upon them. Thou shalt build the altar of Yahweh thy power of whole stones, and thou shalt offer burnt offerings there, there on unto Yahweh thy power, and thou shalt offer peace offerings, and shalt eat there and rejoice before Yahweh thy power. And thou shalt write upon the stones all the words of this law very plainly. You see? So they were supposed to write upon the stones. You must, in the NLT, you must clearly write all these instructions on the stones coated with plaster, you see? So, the the stones, it was supposed to be written on, man. The words of the law, okay? It says, um, so basically, uh, let's see, back in the, on the fifth verse, there and there shalt thou build an altar, okay, unto the Lord thy power, an altar of stones that shall not lift up any iron tool upon them. So they were supposed to make an altar and not cut the stones and write, okay, the words of the law, okay, and they were supposed to make an altar in Mount on in Mount Ebal. Now check this out. <clears throat> 
uh, 9 verse and Moses and the priests and the Levites spake unto all Israel, saying, Take heed and hearken, O Israel, this day thou art become the people of Yahweh thy power. Okay? So there was a covenant made between the Most High and, and the Israelites. Thou shalt therefore obey the voice of Yahweh thy power and do his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day. Okay? It doesn't say any other nation. You see, the Most High directly dealt with Israel. They were given certain... Um, commandments certain statues man just like this altar okay and they were supposed to you know not cut the stones put them together and also write on them okay on mount ebal they were supposed to write okay Th the words of the law this is how you know you know to this day these archaeological findings man they, they could very much be true they are right it says um and Moses charged the people the same day, saying, These shall stand upon Mount Gerizim to bless the people when ye are come over Jordan. When ye are come over Jordan, so like Simeon and Levi and Judah and Issachar and Joseph and Benjamin, these shall stand upon Mount Ebal to curse Reuben, Gad, and Asher, and Zebulon, Dan, and Naphtali. You see? In the NLT. When you cross the Jordan River, the tribes of Simeon, Levi, Judah, Iskar, Joseph, and Benjamin must stand on Mount Gerizim to proclaim a blessing over the people. You see? Pay attention to this. Okay? So on Mount Gerizim, which is on the opposite side of Mount Ebal, okay, where the, where the altar of stones was to be, they were to pro proclaim a blessing over the people, right? Let's just read with this. Strong's H twelve eighty eight Barach Barach Barak to be to be blessed, bless oneself, to bless, be adored. What does it say here? To pray, salute. Okay? Now continuing on. That was to be that was on Mount Gerizim. Those tribes were supposed to bless. They were to praise, they were to salute, right? And the Levi shall speak and say unto all the men of Israel with a loud voice, Cursed be the man that maketh any graven or molten image an abomination unto Yahweh, the work of the hands of the craftsmen, and put it in a, in a secret place. And all the people shall answer and say, Amen. You see? So the Levites were to speak unto all the men of Israel with a loud voice. Okay? Among the other tribes. Among, okay? On that mountain, you see, this is a specific uh, ceremony, right? And they were supposed to basically uh, speak uh, the, these commandments, man, on the mountain. You see, and these are all the commandments. And the people shall uh, say amen, you see. So the Levites would speak, okay, unto all the men of Israel with a loud voice. And the people would say amen after the commandment, you see. And you can see right here in this chapter. You see, so going back, so lucky. Going back um, to the article, that I'm gonna get a couple of scriptures, then end it out. It says, um, "It says if the dating is correct, it may prove the Israelites were literate when they entered the Holy Land." And as you read here, obviously they were, because they were supposed to write. You see. On these stones, you see, what does it say? Right here, eight, third word, uh, verse, and thou shalt write upon them all the words of this law. You see, a second verse. It says, Thou shalt set thee up great stones and plaster them with plaster. You see? Third verse, And thou shalt write upon him all the words of this law when thou art passed over, that thou mayest go into the, into the land which the Lord thy power giveth thee. You see? So when they were to pass the river Jordan and go into the Holy Land, you know, 
they were supposed to make an altar on Mount Ebal, but on Mount Gerizim, you know, those tribes were to gather together and the Levites were to speak unto all the children, the men of Israel. Okay. And the and, and speak the commandments, and the people would say, um, Amen. Okay, but archaeologists are saying that that um it, obviously maybe the people weren't weren't literate. Because it says here, if the dating is correct, it may prove the Israelites were literate when they entered the Holy Land. You see, they were. Okay, because they were they were commanded to write on those stones. Okay, there was there was a Hebrew language, okay. And able to document biblical events as they happen, you see. Yeah, man, they were they were they were writing down what was going on. Okay. Archaeologist Scott Stripling said it's extremely important. Some are describing this as the most important find of our lifetimes because it predates anything we have bit before regarding Hebrew scripts. Okay, this is this supposedly um this is in the times of Joshua. This predates a lot of findings, right? So this is big. Okay, this is a, uh, look at this picture. It says the tablet was discovered at Mount Ebal, which is described in the Bible as a cursed mountain. Okay, and um, I'm going to get to Mount Ebal and um, the other Mount Gerizim, which I read uh, briefly in Deuteronomy 27, which, you know, it's a, if you want, go back over that chapter, because it's basically, um, you know, our history. So it says, so big questions like, was the Bible written when it purports to have been written? Was there an alphabetic script even in existence by which writers like Moses and Joshua could have written? Okay. And obviously, you know, the answer is, yeah, there was, there was an alphabet, you know, there was a Hebrew language. Okay. Many critics have up to this point argued against that and said, no, it was written much, much later in the Persian period or the Hellenistic period. Okay. And, you know, Esau always want to uh, throw off dates and times and, you know, throw some BS in there. So people, simple minded people who are not meant to get the truth can really be confused. And this tilts the scales in another direction, he added. This is why I call this an earthquake, because it's going to have some aftershocks, right? Because, you know, when we get a hold of this information, we we uh, we uh, report on it. OK, now it's funny in that in that video, in, in this article, in this article. OK, and I, and I got other articles, too. Like this one, Joshua's altar on Mount Ebal, Israel's holy site before Shiloh. So, um, you know, just a couple um, articles, but uh, basically, um. You know, you know, when we report on it, it's because, you know, the Holy Spirit moves us, man. They, they, these are these are things that we have to report on. Okay. Now it's going to go into the text inside the tablet. Warns you, warns you are cursed by the Most High Yahweh, and cursed you will surely die. And it is written in pro proto alphabetic Hebrew text. It's a type of scripts that's older than any Hebrew that we have. So it's it's basically some original Hebrew, right? It's because it's older than any Hebrew that they have, right? Said Dr. Stripling, the director of excavations at ancient Shiloh. The archaeologist added that the le the lead that the lead itself comes from a site in ancient Greece where the mines were known to have been in use in the late Bronze Age. It says the text within the folded lead tablet was only just discovered using tomographic imaging. It says that, uh, uh, yada, yada, yada. It's the tablet was originally found in December 2019, but the text inside its delicate folds was only revealed later under tomographic scanning. So I guess that's why we really can't see it because they scanned it. For Dr. Stripling, however, the enormity of the discovery was clear from the first moment as he realized it could indicate that the ancient and sacred scripture was recorded by eyewitnesses. It says, you know what, let me get that scripture. Uh, 
what does this say? Um, there's a scripture that says many, many were the, many were the scribes, something to that effect. That interpreted or something. Did. Many. Oh, let's see. Mm, many were the witnesses. There's a scripture that says many were the people who who uh, published. Many were that published something to that effect. Let me. I'll find it. Lord willing. This is beautiful, man. I like going through these. Yeah, there you go. I like going through these um, type of um, history finds and things like that. This is Psalm 68 and um, uh, 11. The Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yashai, gave the word. Great was the company of those that published it. Okay, so regarding this statement. Uh, at the top for Dr. Stripling, however, the enormity of the discovery was clear from the first moment as he realized it could indicate that the ancient and sacred scripture was recorded by eyewitnesses. Okay, so according to Psalm 1611, Yahweh Shai gave the word. Great was the company of those that published it. Yeah. In the NLT, the Lord gives the word and great army brings the good news. Look up this word gave. Salaka. Wow. Now my phone wants to act up. Okay. Well, then I can get it. Let's look up some words. Gave. Strong's H5414. Nathan. Nathan. Right. The Lord gave the word, man. Okay. To give, bestow, grant, permit, ascribe, employ, devote, consecrate, dedicate, pay wages, produce. Let's see some of the words. Commit, entrust, give, over, deliver, up, yield, produce, occasion, produce, requite, report, mention, utter, stretch out, extend, set a point as designate to be given, be bestowed, be provided, be uttered, be public, be assigned. Okay. It says great was the company of those that published it. There was witnesses. There was people writing these things down. Strong's H thirteen nineteen. Basser. Basser. To bear news, bear tidings, publish, preach, show forth. To gladden with good news. To bear news, to announce salvation is good news. Preach, to receive good news. Messenger. And the Strong's definition down here says messenger, preach, publish, show forth, bear, bring, carry, preach, good, tell tidings. You know? Right. Many of them that were published it. Many people wrote down what Yahweh Bashim Yashai, um, you know, had commanded. You know, the the Bible is is a is a series of stories, man, of books. You see, so going on, he said, "I thought this is too good to be true." The Bible describes Mount Ebal in Joshua chapter eight as the mountain of the curse. And Joshua was told to write curses on Mount Ebal. So here we had what was a known curse tablet from a site that the Bible says cursings were associated with it. I was just blown a bit away by what we had found. Okay. So going back. This is Deuteronomy. Uh, 11 and 29 and it shall come to pass when Yahweh thy power hath brought thee into the land whither thou go goest to possess it that thou shalt put the blessing upon Mount Gerizim and the curse upon Mount Ebal you see so this is the place 
It says the Bible describes Mount Ebal in Joshua, which I'm going to read. Chapter 8 as the mountain of the curse. And Joshua is told to write curses on Ebal. You see? And on Mount Gerizim, we wrote in uh, uh, we read in uh, Deuteronomy 27 that those were the blessings. Certain tribes were to go up on the mountain. You see? And um, the Levites were to speak to the children of Israel. They would give the law. And then the people would say, um, Amen. But on Ebal, they were to build a stone um, altar, okay, and write curses upon it. Now, check this out. I got this. Look at this picture. This is Mount Gerizim Blessings, okay, where, where, where on Deuteronomy 27, the uh, the Levites and the other, tri the other tribes... Would, would I guess stand I guess if I'm not mistaken the tribes would stand on Mount Gerizim on the blessings okay on Mount Ebal or what was to um, build the stone altar and there would be the curses okay it says here natural amphitheater at Shechem okay now in the middle says town of Shechem modern Nabulus okay I guess it's, it's now it's called Nabulus but that's the town of Shechem between these two mountains, right? It says on top, scientists have tested this natural amphitheater many times and it works. You see, a natural amphitheater, okay? So they could actually hear one another speaking on these two mountains, okay? It says ceremony in Shechem, uh, Deuteronomy 11, 22 through, through 30, okay? Also Deuteronomy 27, 1 through 13, which I read, okay? And also in Joshua 8, 30 and 35, this is Deuteronomy 11, 22, and 30, which I, barely, I basically just got to the point right here in um, 29. And it shall come to pass when Yahweh thy power hath brought thee in unto the land, which is talking about Israel, which was uh, prior the land of Canaan, whether thou goest to possess it, that thou shalt put the blessing upon Mount Gerizim and the curse upon Mount Ebal. You see, Mount Gerizim blessings, Mount Ebal curses, okay, as 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 told in the scriptures, right? And and, and this guy, yeah, again in the article, the Bible describes Mount Ebal, in Joshua chapter eight, which I'll read as the mountain of the curse, and the Joshua is told to write curses on Ebal, okay. So now, and that's what they found a stone tablet with curses, okay, you know. The word curse and the word Yahweh. This was the site where it was said and they found it. You see? And this is the uh, a, a, a different form of Hebrew, which they believe predates anything that they've seen. You know? Right here it says, so here we had. So here we had what was a known cursed tablet from a site that the Bible says cursings were associated with it. I was just blown away by what we had found. Okay, so now let's go to book of Joshua 8 and 30. It says, And then Joshua built an altar unto Yahweh thy power of Israel in Mount Ebal. As Moses, servant of the Lord, commanded the children of Israel, as is written in the book of the law of Moses, an altar of whole stones over which no man had lifted up an, any iron, and they offered thereupon, thereon burnt offerings unto the Lord and sacrificed peace offerings. And we basically read that in where? In the law it was written. You see? It's also, it was written here in uh, Exodus 25 that when you build an altar of stone, you shall not build of hewn stone. Okay? Because if you cut the stone, then it would be polluted. So, <clears throat> back in Joshua 8 and 30, it says, As Moses, the servant of Yahweh, commanded the children of Israel, and as is written in the book of the law of Moses, right? So it's written, an altar of whole stones over which no man had lift up any iron. And they offered thereupon burnt offerings unto the Lord and sacrificed peace offerings. And he wrote there upon the stones a copy of the law of Moses, which he wrote in the presence of the children of Israel. You see? In the NLT, 
And the Israelites watched Joshua copied onto the stones of the altar the instructions Moses had given them. Right, the law. He wrote it on the stones. And all Israel and their elders and officers and their judges stood on the side of, of the ark and on the side before the priests. The Levites, which bear the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, as well as the stranger and he that was born among them, half of them over against Mount Gerizim and half of them over against Mount Ebal. So <clears throat> that's what it says here in the NLT, just so we can get some clarification. Then all the Israelites, foreigners and native born alike, along with the elders, officers and judges were divided into two groups. We read that in, in uh, Deuteronomy 27. One group stood in front of Mount Gerizim and the other in front of Mount Ebal. Each group faced the other and between them stood the Levitical priests carrying the Ark of the Lord's Covenant. This was all done according to the commandments, to the commands that Moses, the servant of, of Yahweh, had previously given for blessing the people of Israel. Okay, so this site exists. It's true. See? Some were supposed to stand on Mount Gerizim and some were to stand on Mount Ebal. You see, and the Levites would speak, okay? And they did according to what, uh, the, you know, the Lord told them. You see? And afterward, he read all the words of the law, the blessings and cursings, according to all that is written in the book of the law. You see, so... You know, basically, they read all the blessings and the cursings, okay? And you can find them in uh, Deuteronomy 28. You see, all this is done according every jot and every tittle of the law shall be um, done. I mean, shall not pass to all be fulfilled, you see? So, this is what's happening. You know, uh, 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 it, it's, it, 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 it happened, and now it's being spoken about. You know, they have found the artifacts that claim that these sites did exist and these things did happen. See? So Moses could write Hebrew. He wrote them on stones. He wrote, you know, the law on the stones. You see, 34. And afterward, he read all the words of the law, the blessings and cursings, according to all that is written in the book of the law. There was not a word of all that Moses commanded, which Joshua read not before all the congregation of Israel. You see, so Joshua uh, read all the words that Moses commanded. Okay, before all the congregation of Israel with the women and the little ones and the strangers that were conversing among them. So Joshua built an altar, which they think that they have found. Okay, on Ebal. So yeah, man, it was tedious, man. A lot of things were done back then. Okay, we just have to study and research it. I was just blown away by what we had found. That's of a fact. It says the curse itself is thought to be self-imprecatory, meaning the cursed individual will punish themselves in the event of personal failure. And no, that curse is basically if they would not hearken unto Yahweh, the Most High, that they would actually, you know, that they would die. And that's of a truth. And Dr. Stripling, who was also provost of the Bible Seminary in Katy, Texas, noted the similarity between the text and the curses laid out in Deuteronomy. You see? And he mentioned that. He said, it is a summary of all the curses of Deuteronomy 28 and 29. For example, because there you have all these curses. If you break the covenant that are going to come upon you, you see? It does not say that in Deuteronomy 28. You see? So... What he read on them tablets is reminiscent of even what it says here. Deuteronomy 20 and 15. But it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of Yahweh thy power to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. And Joshua read these two. You see, to the children of Israel. We read that in Joshua the 8th chapter. Okay, they did what they were commanded, but a, hey, you know, that's why, you know, we, you know, always constantly repeating the same thing. It is a summary of all the curses of Deuteronomy 28 and 29. Now tell me that this word ain't getting out. Nobody spoke about Deuteronomy 28 until this, until now, until the Israelites, um, you know, brought it out. 
Why? Because it, to us pertaineth, uh, you know, the, 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 the oracles. That's what profited the Jews, the Israelites. It says by having this structure, is that a liter literary summary of those? So that actual, um, you know, site, Mount Ebal, that they believe they found, hey, that, that's, that's a literary summary. It's written on there, on them stones of the curses. Okay. So there you have it. See, yeah, there you have it. They found an artifact, man. I encourage you to, you know, watch this video and this article when you get a chance. The Bible is true, man. And the Lord is 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 showing signs. Let's get that. Let's get that real quick. The second Ezra's. That's how you know we're at the end. Let's get that real fast. And then we'll end it out. Second Ezra's 9. There's a scripture that says something very important. It says. Second Ezra's 9 and 5. For like as all that is made in the world hath a beginning and an end. And the end is manifest. Even so the times also the highest have plain beginnings in wonder and powerful works and endings in effects and signs. You see? So the times of Yahweh Bashem Yahshai have plain beginnings in wonder, full and wonder. Salakia. I'm going to run that back. Even so the times also of the highest have plain beginnings in wonder and powerful works and endings in effects and signs. So... You know, when the Lord created the world, there was, you know, and destroyed the world and did certain, um, you know, wonders and powerful works that those were tokens of, of, of the beginning. And there's also tokens and signs of the end. And this is a sign because the Lord is visiting the world which he created and is unearthing these truths. You see, and endings in effects and signs. And these endings are not the end of the world is going to be shown with what? With prophecies coming to pass with many um you know, uh, signs in the sky, many strange things, calamities, you know, many things and signs. And this is a sign. Okay. This is the sign that the Lord is getting close. We're measuring the times diligently. The heavenly father is getting close, man. The truth is being fulfilled. One, um, it says, you know, Basically, one jot and one tittle shall in no ways pass to all be fulfilled. Everything is being fulfilled. The truth is coming out. It's all being shown. And, and it's being proven to our, in our faces. They're even finding artifacts in the in the, in the places, okay, in which the Lord said that, you know, these things would happen. Okay? So, Lord Williams was edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to you. Howell, Bashim, Yahushai, Bashim, Rukakudash, Barakatham. Okay, to all you brothers and you sisters that watch these videos, you know, keep enduring. The, the, this truth is, you know, it's something else. The Lord sees he's showing this in our face, man. This is a great find, man. Very much an earthquake. We'll steal that from that from that Edom, the Edomite. It's, it's an earthquake of, of information that will come from this. Lord, when this was edifying, again, I want to say, Shalom.